All right, man. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. What, what's your name? Thomas. Ben. So, um, I'd like to ask you a quick. Did the the dude who just left? Did he change your mind? Did he change my mind? Yeah. No, I don't think he was really trying to change my mind. He was quite open-minded to like new information that he hadn't heard before. And I don't even know if I changed his mind. I just gave him some information um, that isn't isn't really common knowledge. And it's up to him what he does with that. I'm not attached to the outcome if he goes vegan or not. Um, I wouldn't even say that I'm trying to make people vegan. I'm just out here um, trying to spread awareness of something that most people don't know much about and it's like a, a huge global act of injustice so yeah yeah uh, and I'm guessing you're vegan yeah, yeah yeah and wasn't born vegan and used to eat animal products until I seen what most people haven't seen and then I felt in my heart it was an injustice what happens to these animals I thought well if that was dogs maybe everyone would feel a bit more sympathetic but it's not and we're conditioned to value the lives of some animals more than others when in their capacity to suffer were equal you know so um, for me it was it was the ethics behind it but then I learned about the environment and human health and it was just win 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 on, on all fronts but yeah well I feel that all, all life is equal really it's just that I my viewpoint is that um, you know all animals naturally are meant to you know kill each other for food that's a, the natural way of things in my point of view it's just that nowadays it's been taken I, I agree with you when it comes to the environment. People should eat less meat, mm -hmm. and on top of that, like people shouldn't value dogs over cows, for example. Dogs over cows. Yeah, I, I think they're just you know the same. It, they're all hold on. Yeah. I want to touch on something you said there. Anyway, um, you know about the sort of um, animals eat other animals sort of thing. Like the act, in actual fact, the majority of animals in this planet are herbivores. But see on 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 the reality that uh, that some animals do eat other animals, they're literally doing that for survival. Like they're in a survival situation, and they're what you call obligate carnivores. They're obliged to do so, but we aren't um, obliged because now nowadays we have like alternative uh, sources of food, which aren't like the corpses of animals. You know, um, just just thought I would chime in with that. It, it, it was relevant. All right, fair enough. Um, so did you know that? No, I didn't, to be fair. Um, and I didn't know that before I looked into it too. And I respect you for having an open, uh, open mind, man. Oh yeah, it's always good to be open, that's why I'm here. Respect. Uh, how do you feel about lab-grown meat? Like Lab-grown meat? Um, I feel like there's no need for it, um, because vegans have been around for a while and we're doing fine without it. Um, it's one of those grey areas in that like it might reduce um, it might like end up closing a, a lot of slaughterhouses quickly if it catches on but to my knowledge to produce lab grown meat you need to take like the fetal cells of um, like animals um, and that to me is somewhat unethical you're still you've still to exploit an animal to yield that but uh, in, in the grand scheme like I, I feel like there's no need. Whether it catches on and, and what it does f for society and meat eaters in the future, we've yet to see. I feel like it's going to be really pricey for a long time, so I don't know if it's going to be really economical. Um, I'm sure they'll work a way around it. But I feel like when I think about lab-grown meat, it's like a bit sort of like Frankenstein. You know <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's not my cup of tea. I'll definitely not, I'll, I'll not be trying it, you know. What do you think about lab-grown meat? Oh, so when you said pricey, did you mean when it comes to like monetary costs? Yeah, well, I I, heard, I seen I, I was reading about it, and they created like a burger, but it cost something like fourteen thousand dollars to produce it. I, I, so uh, I know that's early trials, and obviously, if they put it out in the market, they will monetize it accordingly, so it is affordable. Uh, but yeah, no, it's not it's not my cup of tea. Uh, well, I, I would certainly. I, I've heard it's going to be a, a bit cheaper, actually. So I, I would buy that over, um, you know, slaughterhouse meat any day, definitely. Yeah. You know, there's like uh, plant-based meat alternatives now that uh, have quite similar textures and tastes. Yeah, I've tried them. Yeah, yeah. It's just a another thing about it, you know. Um, I don't really have that. It's, it's not a very wide variety. And then when it comes to that sort of thing, particularly good ones, you can only find them in very certain places, you know. I would agree with you there. And I would say, uh, even with like animal products, a lot of them aren't, you know, you've had some dodgy taste in animal products as well. You just, like anything, you search for the good ones and you, and you stick with that, you know. Um, 
But what about this? Do you think there's like, do you think morally it can be justified what we do to these animals when we don't have to, and we can be healthy without it? Well, if you take the whole sort of survival thing out of it, in what sense survival? Cause as we're not in a survival situation and not doing it for survival. Um, no, n not really, to be honest. Yeah. On top of that, though, it's just I think also people like their meat. I, I don't think it's actually going to change. Mm. Um, so what, like that people will stop eating meat? Yeah. yeah. How about this? Um, let me see. I know a couple of stats off top. Like from, uh, I'm pretty sure it's 2010 to 2014, 400 million less pigs were bred into existence in the United States. Um, and also, I think it's something like 3.5% 3, 3 of like the whole UK identifies as vegan now. And like there was a time in the past when that just wasn't real. So like it is definitely catching on um, if you look at trends and demographics and stuff, which I would keep a close eye on, obviously, because I'm out here sort of talking about that. But uh, I feel like I feel like in the future people will look back and say, I can't believe that we used to eat animals when we didn't have to. You know, what, what do you think about that? Um, why, why do you think it won't catch on? I think it won't catch on, but people are so used to it, and they just like the taste, you know, I mean, you know. I, um, I agree with you there, like, I didn't stop eating it because I suddenly didn't like the taste, I love the taste of animal products. Um, I just thought it, I didn't like it that much that I was willing to let someone suffer for taste pleasure. Like, have you ever thought, um, what do I value more, taste or life? Yeah. What, do, what, do, what do you value more? Oh, I'd value life more, definitely. You see, I, I came here thinking that I would sort of, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I thought respect, that, respect. Um, you know, debunk the entire thing by saying that the whole argument of some animals are just designed to do these things to each other. But uh, uh, Darwinian sort of, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, you know, now that you've brought up the whole that they're obligated to do it, to do it just for survival. Yeah, it, it sort of changes the whole perspective, doesn't it? Because I probably would have sort of been in a similar place in my mind as you until I, until I'd learned that, you know. That's what I'm saying, like a lot of this stuff is, you know, these industries are so powerful, they're, they're just propaganda machines. When you see advertisements and billboards, it just focuses on the end product and how tasty it will be and, you know, really HD and bright colors and really slick marketing. And there's no, there's no traces whatsoever of the victim some of the per of the individual who who didn't willingly give up their life it was it was violently taken from them and we're just trying to sort of plant those seeds in people's minds to think about ideals they've held all their lives and you know in a 10 minute conversation like this when like i don't know i'm guessing you're 20 maybe 14 14 wow you're a big dude but you know all your life you, and all my life before i learned what i know now I thought it was natural, normal, and necessary to eat animals, and I thought it was the way of life and the food chain and all that. But when you look into it, the food chain is something that exists in nature, like obligate carnivores, etc. But what we do to these animals, a slaughterhouse, isn't something that exists in nature. It's man-made, um, artificially and forcibly breeding billions of animals into existence and pumping them with antibiotics and slitting their throats. There's nothing natural about that, you know? And it just totally flipped my perspective and made me question what I've been taught my whole life and I thought well you know from this point on now that I know I have a choice to make like am I gonna continue funding this mass injustice or am I gonna um, am I gonna like go vegan and give it a try and see what it's like and to be honest man it wasn't you know I don't know but am I I speak to a lot of non-vegans and generally the consensus is that they imagine that it's quite difficult to be vegan but I'm <laughs> You know, I'm no chef or anything like, and it, it's it's very very easy. I mean, do you think do you think you would you would try it, or there would be anything stopping you going vegan, or you seem at least curious to look into it deeper? Like, I have a info card with resources and about like about the environment, about the ethics, and about the health. Um, what do you think? Would you be open minded to ch to check it out and maybe give it a go? Oh yeah, I've always been willing to. Uh, n another thing I'd like to say though, here's the thing. I think that. At the end of the day, animal consumption would still be just about moral because if you keep it just about moral, yeah, like just Mo moral as in like right, okay, acceptable, just about acceptable. Uh, bear with me here. So, if if you decrease the numbers down, because right now the numbers are way too up, you know, to the point where it's bad for the environment, and 
On top of that, if you closed the factory farms and you stopped giving them the antibiotics, you know, th they don't know until the very last minute in these free-range farms that they're actually going to die. They live a happy life up until the very last moment, and then... I would, um, I would, I would disagree that they're happy. Um, a, a lot of their lives, there are, there are some farms that they do look after the animals, but mainstream, like 99% of animals found, you know, like in Tesco's and in, in mainstream supermarkets, it's factory farms, and they're confined, and they're not allowed to express their natural behaviors, and a lot of them don't see sunlight until the day they're put on a slaughterhouse truck. But even if um, they were, th even if they had like a good life, do you think that treating someone good justifies taking their life from them? Like if, if I, if I met a girl and I went out on a date with her and I was really good to her and I bought her dinner and, you know, would that justify me taking her life from her just because I gave her a good life? Even, or even if it was a dog, you know, I rescued a dog, looked after it and then shot it in the head, would that justify the act? Well, if you kept them until the end of the, their life, yes, what I mean is... Their natural lifespan. Yeah, their natural lifespan. Aye, and maybe you don't know, but these animals are killed like a fraction of their lifespan, they're not allowed, they don't wait until they live out their lives, like a lot of them are killed um, when they're still infants, when they're still very young, because they're, they're uh, selectively bred to be heavier than they naturally would be and, and that sort of thing. What I'm saying is, if you took away the factory farms and you gave them their natural lifespan and you only and you didn't give them antibiotics and you did it entirely naturally and you did it in small numbers to the point where it didn't impact the environment very much and things like that. It, but you can't, if, if you're to feed 7 billion people, it's going to have really serious consequences for the environment. Um, the amount of, it, it's not only the amount of land that you have to keep these animals on, which is 74 billion land animals, and um, it's also the amount of land you have to grow crops just to feed those animals and the amount of water to to grow those crops and 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 to you know quench the thirst of the animals like it's so resource intensive that the UN who aren't a vegan organization at all so they're in no way biased have they produced a study in 2010 that said you know as uh, in the future and population is going to rise and rise at, at a point at a point because of animal agriculture, because it's so bad for the environment, like we actually are going to have to move towards a, a more plant-based diet to keep up, to have enough planet to grow, to grow f uh, food on, because if you look into it, and Cowspiracy, the documentary on, on one of the cards, you can watch for free on Netflix, but it shows you that you can yield a lot more like plant protein on a lot less land and with a lot less water and resources than animal protein, so it's more environmentally friendly that way, and so when you upscale it um, with an uh, increase in population, like even if the animals were all looked after and stuff, uh, it's just not, it's just not doable. Um, that, that, that wasn't what I meant. What I meant is sorry. A, 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 yeah, a, a far more plant-based diet, but you keep the meat in there a tiny little bit, you know. And so for for what reason? Well, just because the animals are still going to be there, you, like. They are, but the thing is, they won't be there if they're not being bred into existence to be slaughtered. And well, what I mean is, if you still keep the animals there, and then at the very end of their natural lifespan, then kill them if you keep it at normal natural levels, and use that for the meat. I'd, I'd say that would be the acceptable level. But why would you choose to do that if you could live without killing someone? Why would you choose to keep someone alive just to kill them when you could just choose not to and live a more peaceful life? They're going to be kept alive anyway, and you'd just be wasting the bodies if you like. What I, what I'm saying is, if we're not eating them, they actually won't be kept alive. They won't exist because these animals aren't natural animals. You know, they're selectively bred, um, and and w if if we stop eating these animals, the natural ecology uh, of of the world will balance itself out, and species that are like on the brink of extinction and stuff will come back because the land is there and. Um, I'd also rather not exist than to be exist and to be confined and to be ha have my throat slit. You know what I mean? Are you saying to entirely remove these animals? Yeah, I think I think that it's not okay to bring someone into existence just to kill them and just to use them. Um, and if it was me, like. I know we're talking hypothetical because we can only talk about things like this hypothetically, but if you somehow knew before you came into existence that you were only going to be brought into existence to be exploited and have your throat sliced open, would you honestly say that you would still choose to come into existence or would you say it's better never to have been in that, in that situation? I'd say it would still be better to exist, yeah. Really? Yeah. So if you knew that you were going to be 
your life was going to be suffering, you were going to be exploited for your body, and at the end of it, someone was going to stab you in the throat and eat your dead body, you would, you'd say, I'd rather experience that than, than, than not experience that? Well, I mean, when you say exploiting, do you mean proper free range or do you mean factory farming? No, even, even free range, it's a myth because free range, all those animals still die. They still go to the same slaughterhouse as the animals that weren't free range. You know, it, free range is one of those myths to soothe the conscience of the consumer to make us feel better about our choices. Put it like this, what's really free about free range if, if at the end of it, like you're still going to get hung upside down and have your head cut off? What's free about that? Because up until then, for the rest of their life, up until that final how many ever days it is, you're in a free open field, you're not given any antibiotics and you're given the natural life. Google free range chickens on Google Images and, and look into it. Um, free range has no legal definition, so it's one of those loose terms that they can put on a label and can't be held accountable for. Um, and when you look into it, you'll see that free range can mean like up to 10,000 hens in one barn with one tiny hole to let them outside. Um, there's no green pastures. One sec. Oh, there, oh yeah, that. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm talking about the real world where it actually doesn't exist. I'm talking hypotheticals here. Um, okay. Just, just a moral world. I'm, I'm not talking about what actually happens. I'm saying if in, if I were to create a world right now, yeah. and if these animals were still to be in that world, yeah. and if they were just going to be there anyway, I would keep them at the natural level, let them live their lives properly, and then at the very yeah. end, you may as well use them for the meat. That's what I'm saying. Okay, I get you. Um, but like, that's never going to happen. I know it isn't. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's so, so like, I, it sounds like a nice thought but it, uh, but to me and from the animal because it becomes very easy to justify something when you aren't the victim so to take like your ideal outcome there like which was pretty much all convenient for you and the way you would like things to be even f even in that world from that animal's perspective they're the victim and they're still going to die so h how do you morally justify taking their life when you don't have to Here's another thing, just before I get on to that. Yeah, I, I, just, I would like to hear your answer, but yeah, go ahead. Um, you see, the thing about these animals, I don't actually know it's going to happen. Yeah, well, take like a human child, you know, has no awareness. And what, what if you were to kill a human child? Would it be okay because they didn't know it was going to happen? I'd say... If we're comparing it to the cow, I know this sounds up really dodgy me saying this, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen to what you're saying. Like, if they didn't actually know that they had a life, and if it didn't have much meaning, then... But the animals do know that they have a life. They, they experience subjective reality. They're sentient, you know, they're aware of themselves, and that there are others. They're not aware that what's going to happen to them, and then when it does happen, it's very quick. Even, I mean, I, I've seen things that said um, cows can smell blood up to three kilometers away. And when they're and they might not know exactly what's going to happen to them, but I've seen animals. There's like a chute in a slaughterhouse where they walk down, and and I've seen animals try to turn around and come back and be hit with like a I forget what it's called, but it's like an electrocuted bar. Well, it, yeah, it prods them down the chute, so they can't escape. And f I mean, why would an animal try to back off if it didn't know? They might not know exactly what's going to happen to them, but they. But they, um, they're afraid and they know something unpleasant is going to happen. But again, like even if they didn't know, even if they were getting belly rubs just before it, it still can't be morally justified if you're doing it for an unnecessary reason. Do you agree? Like if someone was to hurt you and it was unnecessary and you didn't know it was going to happen, would that be okay with you? If it was at the end of my life and I'd had a happy life. But, but that isn't the case for all, like 99.9% .9 of these animals because they're killed at a fraction of their lifespan. Hi so uh, hypotheticals again. Like yeah, but I'm, I'm, hypotheticals are fascinating, but we also have to come back to the real reality of the world we live in. And In the real world, I would agree with you, yeah. Yeah, that this stuff isn't right that they're doing, these factory farms. I, I, I never came in here trying to justify that. Yeah. yeah. And, and do you eat meat yourself? Do you eat animal products? Well, yeah. Yeah, I do because you know that they're more readily available, and my parents eat them. That's all. More readily available than well, not not, not more red than like the vegan alternatives, you know. Um, I don't know if you've shopped in like Tesco's in a while, but there's an abundance of vegan products, like whole aisles, right beside like the you know non-vegan versions. 
So the convenience is there now, and it, maybe it wasn't a while ago, but like you know, it's pretty easy these days to be vegan. There's vegan restaurants, vegan even non-vegan restaurants have vegan menus and stuff. So, and my parents grew up eating animal products, and I grew up eating animal products because my parents did. But I felt I felt morally responsible for my you know at some point in life you have to sort of observe the consequences of your choices, and when you connect the dots. Um, and you see that animals are being hurt for choices you're making and you don't have to make those choices and as well man like I eat tasty food delicious healthy food so I'm not missing out on anything the only thing that's absent from my diet is animal cruelty so I just feel like why why wouldn't someone want to be vegan you know I mean what do you what do you think about that just because we're, we're brought up that way should we always continue you know, are, are we not here to evolve and take on new information and, 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 and grow with that? Yeah, uh, yeah, you're 100% you're, you're right, yeah. Do you think if I gave you... Um, and also, like, I'm not out here just to satisfy my own ego and, and whatever. I'm just here because animals don't have a voice and someone has to speak up for them, you know? So this, this isn't about me, it's about doing the right thing. I see this is... they're, they're voiceless. Um, but, I mean, the least you could do is look open your mind up to maybe information that you haven't came across before and then that way it's not just a projected assumption it's actually like an, op a, a, an a opinion based on education then you know the other side of the coin that's been kept hidden from you your whole life and then you can be like well maybe maybe now I can make an informed choice because I don't know if someone had sort of came to me and I hadn't seen any of the documentaries or anything I'd, I'd probably be of a similar state of mind to you but after after seeing it I feel like it, it, it really provokes you to think differently about it and you know if you could live not hurting others why why wouldn't you you know do you think there do you think there's any any justification for hurting animals when you don't have to I'm, I'm trying to do an interview um, well, yeah no I, I have looked into it before uh, definitely a few years ago, yeah, about all of this. Um, but then the sort of whole natural selection viewpoint came into my head, and now you're telling me about how uh, actually it doesn't have to happen that way. Yeah. Uh, like, have you seen Kaispiracy, the sustainability secret? Oh, I, I know all about sustainability, you know. Yeah. The hypotheticals. Have you heard of a guy called Gary Yurovsky? No. A video on YouTube called The Best Beach You Will Ever Hear? No. Have you heard of a documentary on Netflix called Forks Over Knives? Would you be open to maybe looking at some of those? Yeah, awesome man. That's all I'm trying to do. Just just get people to check check out the info. And from there, it's it's up to them what they choose to do based on that. But um, yeah, any more questions or... Oh, no, I'm fine. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for the interview. Cheers. I'll get you a card.